Tonight I'd like to uh, take a look at the topic of how uh, early Christians attempted to uh, find the authentic image of Christ. Early Christians from the 4th uh, through the 6th century depicted Christ in many different ways, but um, eventually there came to be kind of a standard uh, iconographic way to represent Christ. And the question then becomes, why do we depict Christ the way we do? I mean, I assume most artists who depict Christ today haven't actually seen him. And yet there is a, a way in which artists just tend to almost naturally try to depict Christ in a certain way. What I'd like to do first is, is show you a series of uh, images of Christ ranging from the entire history of, of Christian art. This is one of the earliest we have of him. Uh, I won't go into the details of the exact places and dates, but they're listed for each of these illustrations. But uh, as, we, as I uh, scroll through these, take a look at and try to see how uh, the image <coughs> is fairly static. Now, in fact, there are many different ways to represent Christ. This one, however, tends to be what I'll call the traditional uh, iconography. This is an important one. We'll be talking about this a little bit more later because what we're going to discuss is this uh, topic of the Mandilion and its influence on uh, iconography. So bear that in mind. This is a, a, a duplicate of, a, of an earlier icon that was <coughs> in Constantinople from the 10th century and earlier. Than you can see <coughs> that this image is, is duplicated here and becomes a very traditional way for Eastern Orthodox icons to depict Christ. They often cover it with metal and just depict the face and the, and the flesh and paint. As you move into a Renaissance period, uh, in the West you, you get uh, similar images and, and depictions. You can see that it's fairly, uh, fairly similar. Now, of course, it's not exactly the same, but you can tell this is supposed to be Jesus. And Christ as a transfigured being and a celestial being. Uh, here. Now we're into the 19th century. You've still got uh, very similar forms of depiction. This is a very beautiful one that's uh, up in the exhibit as well. Uh, Bloch uh, did uh, some fantastic work in the late 19th century. Here's another one by the same artist. You can see, you know, he's, he's clearly got an image in his mind of what Christ looked like and is reproducing that in, in all of his different representations. Uh, when you turn to specifically LDS tradition, <coughs> that's really developed only in, in uh, this, in the 20th century, we've got a number of uh, Teichert uh, paintings up in the exhibit, and this particular one, you can see, is strongly influenced by these earlier ones as well. And notice uh, this is from The Passion of the Christ, a movie a few years ago, and they pick an actor that, that fits the mold, right? We could have picked hundreds of different actors, and yet you pick one that's, that's similar to those other images. Uh, our ensign, of course, uh, has regular representations of Christ, the both traditional ones and by new uh, LDS artists. So this one's uh, Simon Dewey, uh, and this one's uh, Greg Olson. So what you end up with over the course of what we've shown you is, is really uh, 1600 years of Christian art. And you've got a fairly <coughs> standardized iconographic representation of Christ. Now again, the, the, the specific form changes, the me medium changes, there's lots of differences. But nonetheless, there's this ongoing tradition. 